Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Looking a bit scruffy, but I'm growing my winter beard. I'm going to try to get a nice uh, nice beard for the cold weather that's coming. Uh, so I wanted to show you a, an, an open source project that I ran across. Uh, it's really cool. Now, um, a little over a year ago, I think it was, MFJ, yeah, I know, MFJ, uh, released a product uh, called, well, it's commonly called RigPi. Uh, their part number is MFJ-1234. 1234. 1234. That's amazing. I've got the same combination on my luggage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, um, it's, uh, it's basically a Raspberry Pi with some included hardware for interfacing it to your radio and uh, some custom software that they've done to give it the ability that everybody's talking about with it, which is uh, remote control of your rig across the network using a device like a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, so on. Um, there's commercial solutions to do that. Uh, this is one of them. This is probably probably around the mid to lower range of those solutions. Uh, and it seems to work pretty well. And when I saw that, I thought, you know, most of that is built on open source stuff. Uh, sure, they have a really nice, nice uh, polished front end interface that they've made for it. And I think they have an app um, that runs on uh, Android or, or iPhone to directly talk to it. Or maybe it's all through a web browser. I'm not sure. I've never seen one in person. I've looked at a few videos. Uh, but uh, most of that's built on open source under the hood. And I'm um, thinking, you know, at the time, I was thinking, it's not going to be long before somebody does an open source project that's similar to this. I mean, most of the work's already done. Raspberry Pi, Raspbian OS, Linux, you know, the, the main, main stuff's already there. Well, um, yeah, there's a project that's going on that's in development that's getting really, really close to being 100% uh, being usable. It's got just a few little issues, needs a little polish, but it's, it's getting pretty close. Uh, it's done by uh, F4HTB. I haven't looked his name up yet. Sorry, I should do that. Um, and then he has a GitHub page where you can uh, download the project, and I'll put the link to this page in the description below. And if you scroll down the GitHub page, uh, he has a nice photograph of the user interface that runs on your device and uh, looks pretty nice. Looks like it gives you some control there. Um, and then he has uh, some information on how you need to interface the device, you know, to your radio and all that. And then there's installation instructions, and they're very nice and clear. Now, hardware-wise, you'd need a Raspberry Pi. Um, I have a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus in this little box here that I've been experimenting with for this project. Uh, you need the, the Raspbian OS on it, the, the version of Linux for the Raspberry Pi. And then you can follow through with his instructions here on this web page to install stuff. Um, does it work? Well, let's, uh, let's go over here to the radio and I'll show you that it's, it's almost almost there it's so close it, yeah you could actually kind of use it as it is but it's just got a couple of little little issues yet uh, I'll show you how it works and then we'll talk a little bit more about the installation okay for this demonstration I have the Raspberry Pi is up here and it's presently running it's connected via a USB connection to the little Chinese uh, MCHF knockoff radio, which is presently on 3945. It's midday, so 80 meters is shut is pretty much shut down. Let's see if I can find a signal here. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> somebody in Espanol. All right, we'll turn the volume down on the radio, and I am going to connect the web interface. This is the web interface, the way it looks. Um, when you connect to Universal Ham Radio Remote. I already connected, that's why you can see it on the screen. Uh, but you go to the address of your Raspberry Pi and port uh, 8888. So we're ready to go. If I uh, hit refresh, yep, 
it's telling me welcome now, the first time you connect to it, it asks for your call sign and it remembers the IP address of the device you're connecting with. Um, I don't know if it needs that other than just to say welcome every time you connect. Now, if I hit power, what's going to happen is it's going to start streaming audio from the radio. So, as you can hear, the radio is uh is coming through. Now this is where I can control the frequency up here. I'm gonna wait for them to talk again and I'm gonna change the frequency so you can see the responsiveness of it. And of course they're not talking now. If you look up at the little radio here at the waterfall, when I click, you'll see the waterfall reset there. See that? And the frequency change. So it's controlling the radio quite well. Very responsive. Of course, I go to do the demo and there's no activity on the bands. What about... Uh, and I'm just using the mouse and I'm, I'm just controlling the radio through the web interface here. I'll click on the 17 meter link. You can see the frequency change on the radio. There we go, some FT8. There's always FT8. Now you can see the responsiveness when I click, click, click. Less than, a, oh, about a quarter of a second or so um, for the radio to respond. Let's go to 20 meters. Click, almost instantaneous. Oh, I need to be upper sideband. Can we change the mode? Yes, we can. And the radio changed. So as far as controlling the radio, it's quite responsive. And the audio that you're hearing when we find some audio is coming from the computer speakers. Well, actually, the computer's hooked to an audio amp, which is hooked to a couple of big stereo speakers. But it's streaming the audio nice and clear. Uh, to transmit, we would just hit this big TX button here, and I'm going to click on it. And you could click and hold and the radio went into transmit mode. If I release, it comes back out into receive. So, you know, hey, it's it's actually kind of working. All right, so anyway. Okay, so turn the volume down. So it, it obviously seems to be working just fine for receive, um, and we can put the radio in transmit. Now, when it's transmitting, the microphone on the computer or your tablet or your phone is going to be used to pick up your audio. And in order to show you that audio quality, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ICOM 7300 and its recording feature to SD card. And it does not have an antenna hooked up, and I'm switching... There, I switched the little radio to the dummy load, and I'll put this on the same frequency. Okay, now if I turn this audio up, what's going to happen when I transmit is we're going to have a feedback loop. Um, not RF-wise, but audio-wise, you'll, you'll hear it. There'll be a delay, it'll be like an echo. Oops, well, okay. Just straight up feedback. <laughs> the audio coming out of the 7300 was getting picked back up by the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume on the 7300 down. And I'm going to go to um, uh, record. And I'm going to hit start recording. And uh, now I'm going to transmit and, and talk. Uh, KB9 RLW testing universal ham radio remote. Uh, KB9 RLW testing further. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then I'll stop my recording. Now, what you were hearing um, on the video was the audio that I just recorded on this SD card picked up by the 7300 uh, from the transmission coming from the little 
the little Chinese radio. So you can hear the audio quality is pretty good. Uh, so I, I said in the video that it's almost there. It's working pretty good right now. Um, with the laptop, it works pretty well. If I use a tablet or a phone and it gets progressively worse, with the tablet, when you uh, come off of transmit, there'll be a small pause and then maybe a little buzz in the audio before the audio stream picks up. And then the audio will lag behind the radio by that amount of time. Uh, if I use the phone, it got even worse. Uh, there would be as much as a four to seven second uh, pause after I released transmit before the audio stream started. And then the receiver would be uh, four to seven seconds behind. So that's, uh, you know, that's how it works as is today. And it, as they say, it's really close. It uh, just has a few little issues. You probably could get away with using it. Um, I was using it completely on a Wi-Fi network, which there should be plenty of bandwidth for that. So uh, I don't know if it would be different or not if you ran the Pi, if you were on a home network um, with an Ethernet connection to it instead of using its Wi-Fi. I don't know if that would make a difference. Um, I tend not to think so because... That was the only device, the, the, those were the only devices that were on my Wi-Fi network, and there should be plenty of bandwidth there for, for audio streaming. Um, but anyway, uh, let's look at installing it. So uh, let's say you want to play around with this thing yourself. Uh, the GitHub page, as I said, is linked in the description below. His installation instructions on the page are very straightforward. Uh, there is only one thing that I ran across that um, may or may not be an issue in your case. If we look uh, at the top of this installation here, uh, let's see here, we've got uh, git clone. Oh, it's the prerequisites, requirements. Okay, under the requirements section, that first line that you would copy and paste, uh, the apt-get install where you're installing the uh, requirements. Um, there was one bit, and I think it was, yeah, Python 3 pip 3. That did not show as available in the repository uh, for Raspbian. Now, um, Python 3 pip is there, so I just took that number 3 off on that line. And uh, all the rest of them were fine, and, and that worked. That installed. It installed Python 3 pip. And then the next line, sudo pip3 install pi also audio, uh, worked fine. Pip, by the way, is a utility written in Python, I think, um, that is, a, well, it's a program, I'm sorry, it's not written in Python. Pip is a program for installing additional Python modules that, that makes it a little easier than using apt, I guess. So uh, anyway, that was the only niggle I found on the installation. Take that three so that that uh, line actually reads sudo apt-get install minus y git python3 python3-pip python -pip, and then python3 libham and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So just take that three off. Um, then go through the installation steps. Everything worked fine there. I didn't see any issues. Uh, under optional uh, he has some instructions for adding the run command to rc.local on your Pi. Uh, if you want, if you're going to be putting a Pi next to your radio and this is all it's going to do is your remote rig control and you just want it to start up and be ready to go when you power it up, go ahead and do that optional section there to add the line. Once you've got all of that done, uh, Another thing you might want to do that I did is you might want to put your Pi on a fixed IP address so you can always find it on your network when you go to a remote client. Uh, I don't know that using its host name is going to work on your network. It, that seems to be kind of spotty for, for my past experience. So I, I put my Raspberry Pi on a fixed address and I did that well, there's all kinds of information out there on how to do it, but you, you edit a file in the Etsy directory um, and, and you can set a fixed IP address. But that's just a side note. However you find it on your network is how you find it. Uh, once it's done and it's running and it's hooked to your radio, however you interface it with a signal link, 
a direct USB connection to a modern radio or something like my Duino Vox or something to an older radio. Um, you do need to do that, by the way. You do need to have some kind of an interface for audio and serial control data to your radio. Uh, once you're done with that, um, you can go to a web browser and you can put in the address of your uh, Raspberry Pi colon 8888, which is the port that it's using. Uh, I think it's slash config, and that brings you to the configuration screen. And then on the configuration screen, you set uh, your audio devices to match what your, your interface, signal link or radio, are providing. Um, the uh, COM port is the serial device that your uh, radio is or using to, to do rig control with, and the radio model. And then you hit save and restart server, and then it's ready to go. Um, and once it's, once it's ready to go, you just take your web browser, as you saw in the demo, you connect to your, your uh, Raspberry Pi's IP address, colon 8888, the port number, and you get right into the control screen, and you can then control your radio. So the installation instructions on GitHub work fine, except for that one little typo. Uh, so anyway, that's installation. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to be following this project and uh, watching as it as it gets worked on and improved, and uh, hopefully it gets to the point where its uh, operation and usage is a little bit smoother. I almost wonder if he's going to switch perhaps to using Mumble uh, for the audio streaming, just like the Raspberry Pi project uses. Mumble is a an audio uh, two-way streaming piece of software that like gamers will use so they can talk to each other on their headsets while they're playing an online game, things like that, or other purposes. Uh, that's what MFJ is using with their RigPi. And uh, obviously the audio streaming is smooth enough with Mumble to not have the issues that we saw with uh, Universal Ham Radio Remote. Um, in fact, I think um, I'll put his call here, but there's another gentleman that has looked at um, this project, I think, and uh, has a nice detailed video on installing Mumble and using it to remotely operate your radio sans uh, rig control. So you you know you like if you're using or if you were participating in a net and um, you wanted to go and sit back in your lazy boy, uh, you could just have a Mumble stream set up um, and use Vox on your radio and then just sit there and you know with your phone or your tablet and uh, remotely. Uh, QSO on the radio, uh, just using audio streaming. So yeah, Mumble works. Uh, so perhaps um, um, Universal Ham Radio Remote will will change out that audio streaming, or perhaps he'll fine tune it and figure out how to to make it smoother. It's awfully close. <laughs> it it, uh, it almost works. The user interface on the screen too is a little bit clunky. Um, the tuning, as you saw. You got to hit those little tiny arrows, you know. And if you're using it on a tablet, my fingers, I would occasionally hit the digit next to the digit I wanted, you know, and and things like that. So there's probably some usability issues with the user interface that could be cleaned up to make it nicer. But I'm I'm babbling, you know. As as I say, it's it's an ongoing project. It's in development. It's definitely one that I'm going to watch, and I thought maybe you might want to watch it too or play around with it. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.